So, tools you're going to need according to the instructions. Here we are. Uh, you're going to need uh, yourself one of um, a square and we're going to want a Phillips and a Posi screwdrivers. If you don't know the difference, there's the difference. Different angle on the tip and they've got this little thing in here. I don't know what you describe it as, but that's a posy, that's a Phillips, and there's a better view of the actual screw there. Phillips screw, posy screw. Also, you're going to want um, a bradle, it says, uh, pencil, tape measure, look, whoo, Woolworths. Would you believe it? Anyway, and you're going to want um, a level. And it says in the instructions, a 7mm spanner. Now, my 7mm spanner is in the Rally Toolkit for the Mazda, um, aka shitbag. And that's not to hand. I can get hold of it, but it's not with me. So, a pair of long nose pliers, a pair of mole grips, or well, these ones are crescents, but mole grips. And I've got a 7mm socket and a ratchet. So I'm going to have a choice of these. Hopefully we can do it. And um, I've got all the bits laid out that come with it. Those chrome bits aren't with it. They're just here. And the cupboard. Now, lovely old B&Qs. They take your money and then tell you the bits aren't going to turn up for like six or eight months. So we are at about eight months now, bits have turned up, and I knew this at the start, it said these bits can only be fitted while you're assembling the cupboard. Now, that's great, you buy a kitchen and you can't assemble it for eight months until the rest of the bits turn up, but um, I was told you can fit it, but it's a struggle. Now I can't be the only person out there having to retrofit a part of the kitchen that you've already fitted. So I'm going to film this and um, we'll see how we get on. So first page and it says complete the assembly of your cabinet before installation. Hmm. Interesting, not what we were told. Now, <laughs> we're going to find out what that means. Maybe it means that you can have the cabinet assembled but no top on it. No worktop. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, right. First part, main assembly. Put that together. First instructions are fit this bracket to this assembly. Now, on mine, this came attached already to this large frame. Now, to get it off, you just got to align the wheels, which are one end or another. Let me turn it over. There we are. You align the wheels with your holes, and it just flicks out at the bottom. Um, it shows you, actually, in instructions two, how to put this back on. doesn't figure, but there you go. So, take this off. And you've got to put this on this end. Uh, according to the picture, these hooks are pointing away, so this is the end. Uh, two screws you want are number 25, and if you look, they're really short length, and they're a posi number two. Ta -da. Now it shows you using screws, uh, screw holes at uh, two and three. So there's holes already there for it and they're threaded. Just see if there's much play in these. Really not a lot of play there, so I'll just do them up. So next step is put the frame in and it shows you bradling the holes and then screwing the screws in. Now me personally I'm going to use an impact driver and just screw them straight in. Uh, there's nine 
26 mil screws and they're posies. Now I just doubly checked about fitting this bracket in before I am put my screws in and I glanced at this and it sort of shows you a gap and then says zero so what you naturally think is there should be no gap because zero but then you come down here and it shows no gap and it crosses it through very confusing but it just gives dimensions here to the first hole we are 362 so down here measured from the edge down 362 put a mark and I've simply put a level across because I'm not quite sure where the screw hole is I'll put my square in put a line done the same the other end so as long as that goes through the hole or the first hole that's where it's going to go so there you, are. you can see the line passes through the center of the first hole so what I'm going to do is screw that in place keeping them in there done the same the other end do you want to be looking at that do you there we go so what I'm going to do is put the side ones in first and then I'll put the feet one in afterwards I have my screws in three at the bottom down there despite the picture the picture only shows two but there is actually three three there and it's three up this side but I want to correct myself there I screwed this bracket in it's the back one and um, still wasn't sure there's a large gap between that and the back double checked and the 362 I think it was is to the front of the bracket so it's the front foot of the bracket not the centre of the hole so I've had to crack that unfortunately there's just a just see the hole of the original screw this is the next component to go in and I'm going to be sticking the checking on these measurements from now on and the first set of holes are 14 mil so what I'm going to do is I've got my set square ready and I've got 14 mil well actually I've got about 13 and a half mil because you've got to add the pencil onto the end at least that's the way I do it anyway so I'm just going to offer that up draw the line on the end and then we know where we are this basically butts up against that again so you can't really get it wrong although I'm going to have to watch that right so I've just put my three marks in here one two three and as it happens this is my one the front of this frame here lines up with the, the floor of the cupboard so really you shouldn't be able to get that wrong and I'm providing all your components are the same so I'm going to bosh all the screws in to the items and places where they say they should be so of note here is the second hole in it's not used nor the four at the end so there's that bracket fitted all screwed in next item on the list is this bracket guide bracket goes in on the side and it has got dimensions but of course these dimensions are a little bit more difficult to measure now because we've got this bracket bolted on the bottom so I'm measuring off the top of that now anyway more or less it says it has to be level and it shows a picture of a level so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put it in there and um, level it off I know the first hole inwards um, is 20 mil I think that's right so that's one remark make sure that'll be right I suspect that's going to line up with the hole in the end in fact I might measure that first because then I haven't really got to measure it at all yeah so I just measured it the centre of that hole is actually 20 mil from that edge so again like that bottom panel um, if this is alongside the edge of the cabinet you should be good to go so I'm just going to mount it in there put a level on it 
screw it in. Because the door mounts to all this mechanism, um, these are in the way, so these got to come out of the way if you've um, mounted the door already. So take the brackets off. Okay, so the next operation looks like it's putting in the, the hinge unit which goes in the bottom. And um, by the looks of it, you've got to assemble these bits here onto the arm first. So let's do that. So the instructions show it being this the top, so that's got to drop in from the top. Personally, I think these little phosphorus bronze bearings are a little bit overkill, but um, there you go. Better overkill than not. Uh, the last brass um, spacer washer and the screw, which is a Phillips screw. All right, just make sure I get that tight. Don't go and need ballistic on these. You don't need to. It's only a small screw. Just to make sure it's firm. So at least my paddle is going to get some use. So there's that. Right, pop this in. The Allen key they provide with the cap head, which goes on there. And there's another brass washer, and um, well, that basically which then goes on the pin on the siding unit at the back. And uh, you'll see that anyway as I put it in. So that goes on there at the back, and sorry, that needs to line up with that. So, doing this cack handed. That's tight, and then. bronze bush spacer and screw and I'm going to do them off camera <laughs> so it's the side frame it's quite a heavy old frame so and um, you've got to be careful when it moves up and down because it's all on roller bearings and there's some cable ties around it that hold it in place or at least there should be um, it looks like mine have been bouncing around in the crate and both the cable ties were just ripped off. Now I've put these this frame in and um, it's slightly misleading this. Luckily I did it the right way, which makes a change. Um, I put it in at a slight angle. This picture is a bit deceiving, it gives you like a straight ahead position. It almost says like you should put it in like that, but as you can see down there you've got things going on down there so that's the next step now it just sits there up through that hole and it sits on the bottom one so there's nothing required to get it out but when you put it in make sure that pin is in the back of the slot and we've now got to line that up with two of the screws that are on here there's two long ones just down the bottom so and now we've got to get our seven mil nuts on the back I expect so 
So we've got the bottom fixing screwed in there and the next item is the bracket goes on here goes on there lines up with them two screws okay so I didn't record doing this bracket mainly because I forgot to turn the other camera on but anyway the brackets almost self aligning once you get those two screws done up um, I would just, just nip them very gently and make sure that it all works um, so far these are the only obstructions I've had in fitting this unit when the cabinet's installed because yeah average length screwdriver is too tall really to get a good angle on that you could probably get them tight but it's not quite right you can see the angle on there is just so luckily I have the impact driver here and a pair of mile grips and I've just simply done that. I've actually got a proper holder for one of these but I can't be bothered to go and get it and you're more likely to have this kind of set up somewhere so I simply just done that and used it like a spanner so that's them tight that works nicely next step so it looks like the next step is to fit the um, soft close unit so this looks to mount onto the other three screws which are above the, the pin the guide pin now I'm not entirely sure but I think you probably could have put this on before you even put it in there but nevertheless let's um, put it in as it shows okay so this bracket here that I put on you can probably put in before you put this frame in this is the big frame that just pivots in the top pin um, it does obscure getting to the lower two bulb but not a lot and there's this unit as well this is the um, soft close now you've got to make sure the soft close unit is open um, you can do it by hand afterwards um, basically you've just got to make sure it's pushed right up the channel and um, you've got to make sure it hooks in the other side of this post before you put the screws in because otherwise it just doesn't fit, it doesn't line up the screws um, I think the threads in these screws were all painted because they started on the first thread and then literally went tight so they were a bit stiff going in but you'll get the idea and uh, what it should do is as it goes up if I can zoom in making some grabs hold of that there and then pulls it in and this is the next step door and we're mounting these brackets which are these ones here so I have my door already um, I've taken the hinges off um, which has left some ugly marks where the screws were um, that's the disgusting bit about customer goes to B&Q's um, orders it pays for it and is then told literally well I don't even think it was the same day I think this, they said when it was ordered that there was going to be um, a delay but I think there was an email uh, a few days later to say that delay was going to be over half a year so what do you do do you fit the door as a hinged mechanism so the cupboard is usable or would you just leave the door off laying somewhere for half a year it's disgusting anyway <clears throat> on with this so got some measurements here um, I'm going to measure these and double check them before I do anything else and um, I'm not going to do that because I'll end up sticking my head in front of the camera 
So I'll bring you back in a minute when I've just double checked all the measurements and make sure I've got it right this time. Right, so I've got this screwed on. Now, two things to note. Um, the screws in here undo them a little bit because they do actually protrude out of the back of this. So when you put it on, if it rocks at all and doesn't sit flush, those screws are sticking through too far. So just grab a screwdriver and just wind them out so it doesn't do that. Um, secondly, of course I marked it on the centre ones, I don't know why, because you're only using two screws, the top two holes, but of course this side, um, where I'd had the original hole for the hinge, it was a little bit too close and I wasn't too happy about that, so I put that in the centre. Uh, I don't think that's going to cause any major problems. But um, the other end, of course, I've put the two screws as they should be. Uh, so I'll probably do this again at the top, but of course the opposite way round. Right, I won't use the centre hole this time. I'll use the upper hole, because it's further away. Because if you look at this one, actually, this one actually lines up with the, the door aperture hole. So... Yeah, so there you go, see? See, it's rocking around on those screws. So I just want to back them out. So that's it. Right, so now that goes there. Okie dokie, that's that hung then. So, you've got these two screws here, and basically, this is the bracket that goes on that upright stanchion. Um, and what it will do, will go through there. It's the top one. So effectively, it's that way on the door, actually. Um, these screws control your height adjustment, lifting it up and down. These screws control this adjustment. Combined with these screws here, which will lift it up and out. So it's a little bit of a handful to, to do at least. But um, I'm going to mount them on and here's basically the picture of it showing it. So I think the first thing is to get the height of the door in the aperture right, first of all. Right, so what I'm going to do is you're going to just pinch these up, well not even pinch them up, just get them close. First of all, because I want to be able to go up and down a bit. So, tighten it up and just slapping it off. Just see if I can move it up and down the slot. Yep, easily. We slip it too easily actually. Yep, that'll do. Right, so now basically I'm just going to shut the door and uh, see what the alignment is. Back them right off as well. And let's just put them in the middle. I'm not worrying about the bottom at the moment, I'm just sort the top out. So I just pinch them up. them out of the way. So I'm just going to shut the door. And straight away the first thing is the door needs to go that way. Undone that screw. Undo that one. Slide it over and I'm going to go all the way. 
pinched it up and I won't try again. Yeah, okay, so it's tight, so I need to come back about two mil maybe. Try there. Be okay for the top. Now the bottom one. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is get this gap here, the same top and bottom on both sides of the door, and then I'll try and line up this gap here, top and bottom, and then I will try and line up. Squareness of the door. So that gap is not far out, it's just slightly tighter at the bottom. Okay, next, I think is height. Yeah, so basically, what you do is you slacken these two off and you screw these up. And you can see this move. It's only a little bit. Shut your door, check your height with your other doors, and if it's all good to go, then you can tighten these up. Right, I'll do the bottom ones the same, just tighten them up. Okay, so the next thing is this door is just slightly proud on this end. So I need to bring the door in a bit. Well, I can't bring it in, in a bit because this is done up tight. So all I can do is bring this other side out a bit and hopefully it will let it close a bit more. Um, it's possibly because it's got the rubber buffer stop on this end. So the hidden screw, the secret screw, I'm just going to screw this one up until it touches. That's tight. So undo this one. Now what I'm going to do is undo this a couple of turns, like so. And do the same to the bottom. Right, so what I was doing is here is you've got the two doors and what I was trying to do is get them flush with one another and that's worked perfectly first time actually so they're nice and flush across there Excellent, that is um, job done for that one. No, it's not. No, it's not yet. Right. Got to put the cages in next, which is no big deal, I don't think. Well, here we are, put the baskets in. Um, the last thing to do was actually put this stop in, and this stop goes on these holes here basically, and you just open up the door as far as you like, and you just place your stopper at the appropriate hole to stop the door going any further. However, this is as far as the door will open because it hits the handle on the other door. Now B&Q has designed this kit scene um, and they said this would work but it don't because that's as far as it goes. Donk. Now, you can get a bit further if you open this door and it goes a little bit further until it hits the door there, but it still don't get, well, I mean, it's, it's close enough, you can get away with that, but that isn't the point. So, 
I think they are going to have to go back to B&Q's and see what B&Q's will do about that. If there was no door handles, I expect the unit will probably work. No, it won't actually. That's not going to work because that goes right in there as well. Yeah. Yeah, so it will stop about there somewhere. Right. Okay. We can see what's going to go on. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Showed you how to do everything except this. <coughs> Ta da!